On this very special Father's Day episode, we're sewing a project to remember all of those dads that have passed. Dad sews! Dad sews! Dad sews! Dad sews! Dead sews! Dead sews! This is hell! Greetings, sociopaths. As always, I truly appreciate you stopping by here. Well, like I said at the top of the episode, today's kind of special. We're doing it in honor of Fathers for Father's Day, but really this can be done for anyone in your life. It's a memory project. Now, I've seen lots of these, people taking their dads or moms or or baby's t-shirts or clothing and turning it into a pillow or a memory blanket. Well, today we're going to be taking one of dad's old shirts and turning it into a memory bag made out of a memory. Now, I'm going to be using this shirt as an example. This is just a nice dress shirt, plaid dress shirt. And then my idea for the drawstrings is a little different than some I've seen online, and we're gonna get to that in a moment. Okay, the very first thing we're gonna need to do is prep our shirt, and that's by sewing up these buttons, okay? Now, why would you wanna do that? Well, it's a bag, and we need it to hold things and not fall out. So we want the look of the shirt to kinda of stay, but we want the stuff inside also to stay. So what I'm gonna do is take my trusty Fisker shears here and I'm just gonna cut down the side of this shirt to separate the front from the back. Okay, now you can be uh, as messy as you want here because none of this is really going to matter too much. But what we wanna do is we wanna follow the seam all the way up to the armpit and do that on both sides, all right? And then we're gonna move over to the sewing machine. All right, the reason we cut the shirt up to the armpits is just so we could pull the front of the shirt away from the back of the shirt and sew down our buttons. All we're going to do is tack down on the left and right side after it's already buttoned to really hold that shirt together. Now, luckily on my shirt, I'm using a check pattern, so there's a line I can follow and I tried to get a thread as close to that color as I could and then we're just going to make sure we backstitch um, to make sure that everything holds on tight. Now, the top of this bag is going to get folded over, so you're not gonna need to worry about how pretty that backstitch is. Just go ahead and try to do as straight of a stitch as you can while sewing down your shirt. Now, don't forget to do the left and right side of the buttons, and also don't pull it too much. Let your machine do the work and that way it won't pucker up around the buttons. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this easy step and then we'll go on to the cutting. All right, when it comes to the cutting, you're just gonna lay your shirt out, your front side on top of your back side. We're gonna cut them together with our trusty Fisker rotary cutter here. Now again, because I'm using a check shirt, this is a lot easier. And I'm going to go over to my buttons and I'm just gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven boxes over, and then I'm just gonna stick a pin in it. And that's gonna remind me where I need to cut, and I'm just gonna cut along that line. And then I went 11 over on the other side and put a pin there as well. This way, everything is nice and straight and even, or as straight as the lines on the fabric are printed. <laughs> so let's go ahead and give it a cut. All right, now you just wanna pick your line and you wanna be very careful when you're doing it. And you wanna apply enough pressure that you can cut through both layers of fabric, all right? Make sure everything is all even on your cutting mat before you do this. All right, so now that I've done that, I'm just gonna cut some horizontal lines, cut up my other side, and then we'll start sewing this bad boy. All right, well, I flipped my pieces inside out, and then I went ahead and pinned them, and now we're gonna move over 
to the sewing machine. Now all you have to do is pick the line that you want to sew, or at least I do because I'm using this awesome check fabric, which is a great idea, I think, for your first run at this. And drop your foot down, make sure you backstitch, and then sew, right? No, no. All right, here is the key. This is a drawstring bag, so we need to leave an opening. So you need to go ahead and sew down to the area that you've picked a stop at. Then you're gonna want to backstitch, all right? And then I'm gonna press this button and cut my thread because I'm done sewing the top of it, all right? Then I'm gonna move down to where the opening is going to pick back up or close up. <laughs> and then I'm gonna drop my foot. I'm gonna sew a little, backstitch. All right, and then I'm going to continue to sew down my garment or bag, garment slash bag. <laughs> now the reason we do that is so that we can slide in our drawstring and the reason you backstitch it is because that's where all of the pressure is going to happen for your bag, right? So you don't wanna be tugging on the drawstrings and all of a sudden your bag rip. So you always want to backstitch, all right. Now go down to the bottom of your bag, where you're gonna stop, all right? We're going to leave our fabric in there. We're not gonna cut the thread. We're just gonna lift up our foot. We're going to rotate our bag, like so. Drop our foot, and then continue. Now once you reach the other corner, you're gonna do the same thing. Stop at your hole, backstitch, lift it up, so backstitch, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and finish that up, and then we're gonna talk about how the drawstring works and how we finish this bag. All right, now the next step is to press open your seams. Now, do not skip this step. I have been guilty in the past, many times, of skipping the ironing. This is not a project you can skip the ironing on. Other than back stitching around the hole, pressing open the seam is probably the most important step of this project. And that is all so you get a good hole for your drawstring. So lay down your seams here, the flaps around your seams, and make sure you press them open, okay? All around that hole. Now the rest of the seam all the way in the bag, we can tidy that up in a minute, but make sure you press open your seam, all right? All right, let's put that down there and hopefully I don't burn myself. All right, so here is our hole that we stitched through. Now we're going to take the top of the bag and we're going to turn it down just like this, okay? So we still have our hole right there, and now that our seam is pressed open, it will be smooth, and that's the point. We don't want all this frayed bits to come through the hole, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and pin this down all the way around the top of the bag, and then we're gonna sew the bag closed up top, all right? Let's go ahead and start pinning. I'm gonna be right back. All right, now that we've got everything pinned, we're going to break apart our sewing machine. I'm gonna remove the tabletop feature there. Now, some of you might not have a tabletop feature, and this is where that becomes awesome for you because you don't have to worry about that step. This is a really nice feature to have on a machine, and that's why I love my Juki QVP, but it also can be removed, which is very nice because then you can loop stuff around this part of your machine. And if you're doing bags or socks or pants, well, anything really with a small opening, it's very nice to be able to loop around there. Now I'm gonna start where I have one of my holes. You're just going to do a very simple stitch, okay? This is nothing complicated. You're just gonna make sure that you back stitch, all right? Drop our foot down. Go ahead and sew here. Now, as I've said before in other episodes, I'm really lucky with this Juki QVP machine because I don't even have to lift a finger. I can just step on the back of my pedal and it'll backstitch for me. That's a really great feature to have. You can also set up the pedal to do different things like cut your fabric, 
or I think lift the foot as well. So I guess if you've got a project where you're making lots of turns, that could be a very, very convenient feature. So definitely check out the Juki QVP. There's always links in my show notes on YouTube on where you can find one for a great, great price. All right, let's go ahead and keep on sewing here. I'm just gonna go all the way around. This is nothing complicated. You'll be able to do this very easy. All the way around, make sure you backstitch. And then let's just go ahead and finish up this bag and, and we'll talk about how we can trim some of the fat, okay? Now our bag is nearly complete. We've got to put the drawstring in and we'll talk about that in a moment. But we also want to trim some of the fat with our bag. Now, how do you trim fat when it comes to fabric? Well, you get yourself a pair of Fiskars pinking shears. And all you do is you take this excess fabric that was on the seam that we ironed out and you just trim that with your pinking shears. Now, why do you trim with pinking shears? Well, because it keeps the ends from fraying. So you have this fabric here that's never gonna fray after it's been cut and you're getting rid of some of it so when you turn out the bag, it's a little easier on the corners. Well, there are many, many drawstring bag tutorials online and there's a couple different ideas when it comes to the bottom of the bag. The one we're gonna do is just leave this as is because it's going to be a memory bag. So we might have books, picture frames, square objects. So we're gonna leave a square end to the bottom of the bag. Now Dana over at Made Every Day takes the corner of her bag and sews it right here, right here. And after she sews it, of course, you would take your pinking shears and cut off the excess. And that way the bag has a more rounded bottom for you to carry it around. That's definitely a way you can go, but this is the easiest way and it's also the best way if you're going to be putting square or rectangular or angled objects in the bag. I'm gonna go ahead and trim up the rest of this excess fabric and let's put the drawstring in and show you the final product. All right, when it comes to putting a drawstring in this bag, of course you could use anything, string, ribbon, yarn, but I think if you're making a memory bag, let's say for your grandfather, why not make the drawstring part of that memory as well? You've already got his shirt and I'm going to be using shoelaces. Now you can get these shoelaces from his classic dress shoes that he wore every Sunday to church or maybe his work shoes. Maybe you want to use the dirtiest shoelaces you can find because he worked in the garden every day and that's how you want to remember him. I think that's a great idea. Now for this project, I'm going to be using Boston Red Sox themed shoelaces. Now these are for me because this is going to be a future memory bag that I'm gonna give my kids. A little backwards, but that's all right. So we're going to take a safety pin here and we're gonna put it in the end of our shoelace and we're going to click it in there, all right? And then we're going to stick it in our hole that we made in our casing and we're gonna go all the way around and push it all the way around through this bag until we come out the other side. Time for the speed camera. Now we just have to do the same thing all over again. The other hole, the other shoestring, work it in one end and come all the way back around the same end. We're almost done. And there we have it, a memory bag made with the memories of your loved ones. Now there's a couple different things you can do with the excess string. You can trim it to length if you want. You can go ahead and tie it in a knot, which will make a loop. And then you could actually wear this as a mini backpack but I do recommend if you're gonna tie it off, go ahead and slide this under your sewing machine, go through a couple times and give it a stitch. That way it'll definitely hold together and you don't risk accidentally uh, pulling the strings back through. 
Now here's a cool little tip if you use a shirt like I did. Here's a button in the flipped over part of the casing and you can actually sew a buttonhole on this side of your bag and you could button it together. I think that is a nice little bonus feature of using a shirt like I did. I would love to see your projects. You can tag me on Facebook at facebook.com slash dadsews or you can tag me on Instagram at dadsews. It doesn't get any easier. Love to see your projects. Love to hear your thoughts about this project. Please click the like button on YouTube. Click share on Facebook. That will help me out. We're always giving prizes away to people who share. And I think a great prize for this project would be a pair of Fisker pinking shears. So go ahead and click that share button and tag a friend on Facebook. All right. I will see you soon with a new video. As always, remember our motto, so fail, repeat. I'll see you next time. Hey, I hope you liked that video. Be sure to click right here to subscribe and you'll be instantly entered to win a free sewing machine. How cool is that? And click right here for another great video. Hey, it may be better than this one. Go on, I'll wait. Seriously, I have all day.